We begin from the nation's capital, where organized labor has commenced an indefinite strike nationwide over the alleged ill treatment meted on NLC President Joe Ajero in Imo State. But the federal government insists the industrial action, which contravenes a court injunction, is not in the national interest. TVC News' Jokia Adisa reports. It's the first day of the NLC-TUC strike and activities at the Bosnian Federal Secretariat in the nation's capital are still business as usual. Workers and visitors are seen going in and out of the secretariat. It's different strokes for different folks, as some of the workers describe the strike as selfish, while others kill behind organized labor. Yeah, I think that one is uh, political. You know, anything that happens at the political scene, you cannot generalize it to the national issue. I think maybe that's why people don't take them seriously. They should stop politi politicizing everything. They are fighting for for our own good. They should sit at home and pending when the issue will be ratified. Your confirm fellow comrades beating for Imo, you are not taking it personal on the nation. You want to cripple the economy, the, current, the current economy they are trying to, 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 to revive. There's an order of court, so I uh, call on the labor leaders to obey the order of the court. Already, the federal government insists the strike is against is national right. interest. The special advisor to the president on information and strategy, Bayo Nonuga, says the NLC and TUC decided to punish a whole country of over 200 million people over a personal matter involving the NLC president, Joe Ajero. While the nationwide strike declared by the NLC and TUC seems not that very effective at the federal secretariat, here at the National Assembly, it is a complete shutdown. The Parliamentary Staff Association of Nigeria disagrees with the government as it shuts all gates to the National Assembly, preventing workers and visitors from assessing the complex in compliance with organized labor's directive. Somebody was brutally beaten, eyes swollen, almost a dislocated shoulder and neck, and somebody somewhere is saying that he's not in, he, he is not aware of it. It happened in your street. In your state, he was weeks away by the police and talks. We demand an apology. We are not allowed entrance um, for the reason that labor is on strike. And the, the Nigeria Labor Congress and the Trade Union Congress have now declared an indefinite strike and feigned ignorance of an order by the court, stopping them from demonstrating to register their displeasure over the assault on Joe Ajero president of the NLC. The days ahead will indeed show how more effective this strike will be. Joke Adisar, TVC News, Abuja. In Boronu, government offices, financial institutions and schools have shown partial compliance to the nationwide industrial action declared by the Nigerian Labour Congress. The state NLC chairman says its union members will be going round the state to ensure total compliance in solidarity with his national body. All agencies, ministries, schools, and financial institutions are expected to show maximum solidarity with the industrial action. We are directed to comply. So almost every state in the Federation must comply. As resolved in our National Executive Council meeting yesterday, all the state council must comply with today's strike. I think they will not fail because what, what we are doing, all what the labor is doing is because of that. And now to the National Assembly where the Speaker, House of Representatives, Tajuddin Abbas, says his leadership is committed to a partnership with President Bola Tinubu towards the successful implementation of the Renewed Hope Agenda. He said this at the official unveiling of the eight-point legislative agenda of the 10th House, witnessed by dignitaries within and outside Nigeria. National Assembly correspondent Joke Adisa reports. In the last few years, every dispensation of the parliament formulates its own legislative agenda that will drive its course for four years. This agenda says the parliament to stay focused and serve as a guide as it responds to evolving national and international challenges. Just last week, the House considered and passed its eight point agenda after months of painstaking legislative exercise. It is now time to formally make the document public. It is titled The People's House. The speaker says the policy document was rooted in the fundamental belief that the primary role of legislators is to serve the interests of constituents. The legislative agenda of the 10th House of Representatives are entitled 
the people's house is rooted in the fundamental belief that our primary role as lawmakers is to serve the, the best interests of our constituents. President Bola Timumbu was represented by the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, George Akume, and he expressed his administration's commitment to impact the lives of the people. The people of Nigeria deserve a legislature with experience, testing, and victorious leadership. I recognize the importance of effective government in surveying the process of becoming a government. The agenda will have come to my participation in the high quality of the national government. For the President of the Senate, the most important task at hand will be to work closely with the executive to provide long-lasting solutions that will set the nation on a sure path of development. We have wrapped this agenda around issues germane and crucial to our national development. And you have committed yourselves to supporting the executive arm of government, led by His Excellency President Bola Ahmed Chulibu. The eight priority areas in the legislative agenda include strengthening good governance, improving national security, law reform, economic growth and development, influencing and redirecting Nigeria's foreign policy, as well as climate change and environmental sustainability. Dr. Yadza. TVC News, Abuja. And to politics, the chairman of the All Progressives Congress in the Southeast has commended the Independent National Electoral Commission and security operatives for a peaceful and credible conduct of last Saturday's off-cycle governorship election in Imo State. Speaking at a press conference in Oweri, the Imo State capital, the chairman advised those political parties who contested the election not to go to court, but accept the verdict of the people of Imo State in good faith. TVC's Prince Oba reports. The off-cycle governorship election in Imo, Bayausa and Kogi states, have come and gone, but with reactions from the winners and losers. Nine, nine and two and fifteen. This APC Southeast chairman is pleased with the Independent National Electoral Commission and the security agencies for ensuring that the governorship election in Imo State turned out to be a huge success. Nesayas, who thought Imo State would turn to a theater of war, were disappointed. The extent of the victory and the margin of win has shown everybody in Imo State that the people of Imo State took a very bold decision to re-elect him. And um, for the first time in the history of Imo states, maybe most part of um, the country, the governor won the two polling booths in the government house. It is very rare. What I expect from all the opposition parties in this election is to congratulate the governor. For the coalition of INEC accredited domestic election observer groups, the November 11 governorship election in Imo states will be adjudged as the most peaceful and safe pool in recent times. Seeing the election as an opportunity to make amends from public complaints and issues arising from the 2023 general elections, there was an obvious improvement on the part of INEC in ensuring a credible, free, fair, and transparent election in Imo State. The conduct of INEC was totally in line with our relevant electoral laws. The Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and of course, the guidelines for the election as issued by the Commission. As the winner of the election has been declared by the Independent National Electoral Commission, expectations are high for the elected governor to keep to his part of the social contract. Prince Oba, TVC News, Owerri.